Welcome back, everyone, to Open Line. Very interesting discussion, talking about the worker shortage. Um, you've just thrown out some fascinating numbers, fascinated by that. Uh, Dr. Achintia Ray, a TSU economics professor, uh, talking about all of the stimulus money that's been spent, the questions we need to be asking. Um, let's go to Lucy now, who has been waiting. Hello, Lucy. Hey, y'all. Uh, professor, I've got two things. The, the latter is more of a rhetorical question. You do not have to respond at all, but I'm going to have to say it. The first thing is, about 45 years ago, I took a technical job, which basically paid me almost double of what minimum wage was at the time. And they had an HR department, an in-house training department, and they trained you the way they wanted you to train. And one of the incentives outside of insurance, because they own their own insurance company, was that they had educational benefits if you wanted to go to technical school and improve. Well, when it came time that I noticed that, you know, the guys making more money had a, a technical skill that they could teach me, but they wouldn't teach me on the job, I went to the HR department to apply for those educational benefits, and within two hours, my supervisor tracked me down and backed me down from take, doing that. And long story short, in hindsight, I couldn't have done that anyway because it was kind of seasonal. And uh, a lot of times I was working 70 hours a week for a good part of four or five months, okay? And then they would switch me to another department when things got slow. So there is no way that I could really have gotten into a program and stayed there. And it was almost like a ruse. Well, back then, if you got educational benefits, they picked up the tab. And in the late 80s, I think it was, corporations quit picking up the tab and they put the tax burden on the employee that if you got educational incentives they consider that like a wage and you had to pay that tax on that. Well, I heard Walmart this morning on the news has announced they're going to give college incentive programs. And I had to laugh because I'm like, <laughs> okay. I know so many people that work in those jobs that are on call all the time and they can't really go to technical school. They'll have to take something online or they'll, their school will be interrupted or whatnot. Right, right. And I'm thinking, you know, are they going to enroll in this stuff? Pay, pay taxes as in wages on it? and really never get to finish it almost seems like a uh, like an illusion so uh, if you can comment about stuff like that and the other thing is this uh, back in the early 80s we allowed offshore banking and we allowed a lot of money uh, to go offshore and be laundered back in through real estate investment trust and things like that 60 minutes did a show here about two years ago how we're the number one country in the world for laundering drug money and they're putting it into a lot of real estate how in the world do we expect people living on minimum wage to compete with something that's in the business of making a high return since they lose 50% of their investment off the top and they want 100% and plus back on their drug money? How in the world could the guy at McDonald's compete with that money going into real estate okay. and buying all these things? All right, let's, let's talk about all that. Okay, so... She said the second one was more hypothetical. Um, a rhetorical question. Rhetorical. <laughs> yeah, more yeah. rhetorical. Yeah. The illusion of benefits, that was her other thing. Yeah. And I think uh, her, her point about, you know, on-the-job training or some way finding opportunities to improve the skill level is very, very important because um, technology is changing constantly. And we kind of talk about it in a very loose manner but now we know that you know from everything from biotechnology to 3d printing to changing in the, how the manufacturing uh, industry work um, even some of the hospitality industry food industry I don't know how technology is going to be changing those things I mean can we have some we, have, we, we already have Uber Eat and all that kind of stuff, Grub, and, you know, technology has started going into those kind of sectors, and, you know, her point is very well taken. I mean, being able to use the resources available, which is our country has invested trillions of dollars over many, many decades in both school, technical school, and higher education. 
and we are the best in the world in terms of resources and what we have to offer. And it will be a shame if we do not work, allow other people to take advantage of everything that we as a country already have. But, you know, I will just go at, go a little bit tangential. I'm not an accountant, I'm not a CPA, so I do not really know the tax treatment of those kind of benefits. So I will, um, I will uh, probably dodge that question because <laughs> I'm not qualified to talk about that. But definitely one other thing that we need to talk about is Going back to her question, do we really have money available to our schools and colleges and technical institutions to really bring in the skills that we need? And whether the money that we are allocating to our education uh, uh, institutions is enough in is some adequate. sense. All right, we, so, all right, we have to take a break. Uh, then we'll come back, continue the discussion. We will take a break. Be back right after this.